Good morning. Welcome to Ebenezer United Church of Christ, friends, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we are so glad you're here, especially today as we celebrate the affirmation of faith of our confirmation students. It really is a celebration of a journey that we've taken together, for today is an affirmation of the baptismal vows that were made on their behalf and were made to their families by the congregation. So now, friends, I invite us to open our hearts and our minds as we join our voices as we're called to this time of worship. We invite those of you who are able to please rise in body and spirit. If you will please read with me the call to worship. God calls... And we answer, here I am. God calls us into partnership, so we come to learn how to work together. God calls us to the unknown, so we come to be equipped and guided. God calls us to worship, so we bring our whole selves to praise and prayer. Here we are, seeking to live in the ways of God. And now, if you can remain standing, we will sing uh, praise to the living God.
If you will remain standing and read together with me the prayer. God of life and love, when the story is hard, we pray you would reveal your grace, shimmering at the rough edges, reaching out from under the broken places, begging for our attention from the thicket. We come with our full attention to see what you would show us today, and to walk in oneness with you and each other on this road of faith and life. Amen. Please be seated. And now we hear the scripture from Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 through 3, 20, uh, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. The Lord was attentive to Sarah, just as he had said, and the Lord carried out just what he had promised to her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son for Abraham when he was old, at the very time God had told him. Abraham named his son, the one Sarah bore him, Isaac. After these events, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, Abraham answered, I'm here. God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him up as an entirely burnt offering there on one of the mountains that I will show you. Abraham got up early in the morning, harnessed his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, together with his son Isaac. He split the wood for the entirely burned offering, set out, and went to the place God had described to him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place at a distance. Abraham said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will walk up there, worship, and then come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the entirely burned offering and laid it on his son Isaac. He took the fire and the knife in his hand, and the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father? Abraham said, I'm here, my son. Isaac said, here's the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the entirely burned offering? Abraham said, the lamb for the entirely burned offering? God will see to it, my son. The two of them walked on together. They arrived at the place God had described to him. Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. But the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham said, I'm here. The messenger said, don't stretch out your hand against the young man and don't do anything to him. I now know that you revere God and do, didn't hold back your son, your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a single ram caught by its horns in the dense underbrush. Abraham went over, took the ram, and offered it as an entirely burnt offering instead of his son, Abraham named that place the Lord Sees. That is the reason people today say, 
on, the, on this mountain, the Lord is seen. So ends the reading of the scripture. Now I invite uh, the children to please come forward if they're comfortable. Um, okay, guys, if you want to go this way, we're just figuring out how to do this with all this recording stuff. So if you want to sit this way, so if you want to sit on the floor right there and face this way, we'll make that happen so you can be seated right there. Perfect. So how many of you have ever been at church when somebody gets baptized? Have you seen that? Have you seen somebody get baptized at church? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I saw like most all of you get baptized at church. It's a really special thing. It's a very special thing. And I know um, even though recently, because we baptized so many babies who were born like last year, and we weren't worshiping at church. So we had a lot of baptisms this summer. And a lot of them were older already. But sometimes when the kids get baptized when they're really little, they might wear a white gown. A li baby Olivia, who got baptized a couple weeks ago, was wearing a white gown. Now, when you turn around and you look, what do you see? What do you see sitting in these chairs? Uh-huh. White gowns. Who are these people in white gowns, and what are they doing here? Huh? Yeah, that's actually scripture. Did you know that? Thank you, Jason Albrecht. Mm-hmm. These are people who are getting... Very good. These are people who are getting confirmed. They're confirming their faith. So when you get baptized, somebody says, we believe, and we want our baby to be baptized. And we want our baby to learn the stories about God's love and what it means to follow Jesus. And then the congregation says, we want to work with you. And we want to make sure that there's always a place for them to learn these stories, like through Sunday school and vacation Bible school and lots of family activities so that we can learn what it means to live out our faith together. And then, as you get older and you start learning more about what is this faith thing and how, does, how am I supposed to live this, you then confirm your faith. Nobody told the people behind you what they had to believe. They wrote their own faith statements, right? What they are saying is, I do believe. This is important, and this matters. And I don't exactly know what this journey of faith will look like moving forward, but one thing I know for sure, God is always with me. And I'm going to try and show that love of God in all the ways I can. So I pray that as we see Brayden and Danica and Regan and Hayden and Connor and Jada and Devin and Sam and Quinn confirm their faith, that we might think a little bit more closely about, hmm, what is it that I believe? What is it that I know? And I pray that it's that you know that God loves you more than you can possibly imagine and is with you always, and that God wants you to show some of that love in all the ways you can. So guys, I have treats here for those of you who might want one. Please make sure you ask an adult before you open that. And as they are selecting a treat from the basket, I invite you to re remain seated as we respond to the story of our faith and the living of our faith. As we sing, I believe in the sun. i 
I believe in love, even when I do not feel it. I believe in God, even when God is silent. These words were found scrawled on a cellar wall where Jews had hidden during World War II in Cologne, Germany. In 1620, John Robinson, pastor to the pilgrims who would set sail for the new world on the Mayflower, declared, there is yet more truth and light to break forth from God's holy word. God is still speaking. May we listen for holy light and love, even in the silence. Well, talk about a hard story. In some ways, it probably would have been easier to pick a different scripture, especially for Confirmation Sunday, but in life we often encounter hard things. Sometimes we're confronted with very difficult things and trying to avoid them doesn't make them go away. So, about this story, God calls Abraham away from all that is comfortable and familiar in his homeland, calls him away to a new place that God will show him. God wants Abraham to go, and God promises to make Abraham the leader of a great people, of a great nation, and God's going to bless Abraham with many descendants and make his name great. The big problem with this promise is that Abraham and his wife Sarah are really old, and they don't have any kids yet. But Abraham goes, trusting that God will provide, and you know what? In time, God does. Abraham and Sarah have a son, Isaac. And for years, they experienced the blessing and the joy of being parents. And then, then we come to this story today. There are so, so many different ways to talk about this story, which is a good thing that there's a lot to consider about a story from our scriptures that where God asks Abraham to sacrifice his child. At least, at least that's what Abraham thought and believed God was asking him to do. Several commentators lifted up that during this time in history, in, in that region where Abraham was and in places all around the globe, human especially child sacrifice. That was a pretty common practice, often done to appease pagan gods and try to, try to earn their favor. Centuries later, in a civilization that has been well documented that they have practiced child sacrifice, the Incan Empire in South America was located in the Pacific Ring of Fire, where earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and massive floods, floods caused by El Ninos every seven years caused incredible devastation and destruction and death in their empire and always threatened the food supply. The Incans 
sacrifice children, to appeal to the gods for mercy. So for Abraham, God demanding this type of, of sacrifice would not seem completely outside the religious norm in that region. But, but did God demand such a sacrifice from him? Clearly from our story, Abraham believed that it was the case. He believed that he had discerned the voice of call, God calling out to him to do so. Which is perhaps why in verse 11, another voice, a different voice, a different sound, desperately trying to get Abraham's attention, cries out, Abraham! Abraham! The angelic voice cries out for attention. Abraham, do not lay your hand on your son or do anything to him. God provides another voice. God provides another way. As Abraham looks up and he sees a ram for the sacrifice, a new model for offering is provided. As God establishes, hey, I am different from other gods. In the sixth chapter of Micah, the prophet answers the question regarding, well, what does God require? Revealing just how different the God of the Israel people, people of Israel is. Beginning in verse 6, the prophet asks, With what shall I come before the Lord? Shall I come with burnt offering with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. God provides. God is intimately present, reaching out, speaking through another voice, offering another way to live in good and right relationship with God and each other. And you know what? We do need each other. God calls us to live in community, and our story today shows us just how important a community of faith with many voices is. Yes, God is still speaking, and it's in community, connected to God and each other, that we discern who God is and, and, and what God is calling us to do and where God is calling us to go, to be present in our community. Connected to God and each other, we recognize that, you know what, we can do hard things together. In community, we discover again and again and again that God is bigger and more than we have imagined. And we come to know that God empowers us to live the dream that God dreams for us and in our life together as a people. So Brayden, Danica, Reagan, Hayden, Connor, Jaden, Devin, Sam, and Quinn. While it might not seem like it right now, that, that together part matters. Way back in the 1500s, Pastor Martin Luther tried to explain to one of his parishioners that there are no solo Christians. And he did so by taking an ember out of the fire and placing it on the hearth, where that ember quickly faded and burned out. For the flame of faith to continue to burn in you, for it to nurture you and to inspire you, you have to be connected to the source. And the heat from that flame provides warmth and light in the most vibrant ways in community. Now, most of you have been part of this faith community since the very beginning. I've known a lot of you since the day you were born. You were part of that massive infant and toddler class that made the child care room burst at the seams. Others of you have added your light and your energy and have been a blessing to us in so many ways along the way. 
each one of you have incredible gifts, perspectives, and insights that help us to live into who God is and who God calls us to be. Now, I'm going to be honest and tell you that a part of me is really frustrated, but most of me is just really sad that our time together in confirmation ended up being very little like we had anticipated it would be when you started. Instead of enjoying time together with youth activities and overnights, the confirmation retreat at Pilgrim Center, going on mission trips and doing things in the community, we spent way too much time looking at each other on computer screens for Zoom confirmation. It was like, uh, even I didn't want to go to Zoom confirmation. <laughs> when we did get together, we were spread really far apart in a large room with the windows open, even when it was freezing outside. And while I grieve the time that we didn't get to spend together having fun and sharing experiences that would help us grow in faith and friendship, still I'm super grateful for the many years that you have been actively present here at the church with fellowship events and fun things, for Sunday school and vacation Bible school and worship. Because all of these were opportunities that blessed us with the gift of getting to know you. Getting to know you. Brayden, in you, I have experienced a shy little boy, a mischievous little guy, and I really enjoyed getting to know the maturing young man that you are becoming. The young man who isn't afraid of trying new things. And in all of these things, what I've truly valued is getting to know you through the eyes of your grandparents who adore their kind and helpful grandson who shows up for them in so many ways. So, Brayden, you've been involved in church since you were in your mother's womb. Your dad had a long and storied history as the favorite youth leader here at the church for decades, decades. And then just as you get to the age where you can start getting involved in youth activities, while well, this global pandemic shows up. We didn't get a chance to do a lot of those things. So, Brayden, I pray that as opportunities open up for your dad, to plan other activities at the church, that you might be willing to work with him in that, and that you might be willing to show up for some of them, because there's nothing that younger kids like more than to hang out with older, cool kids. So I'm really looking forward to watching you and Hayden play football, and I hope that I'll also be able to see you here as we continue to learn and grow in faith. So Danica, when you were three years old, I totally envied your stunning, thick hair. And now, Danica, I admire your sense of self. I admire your no-drama approach to life. And Danica, through your God sightings, it is so very evident that you are an authentically present friend who supports those she loves and cares for. You're someone who's very passionate about your family, and you've often talked about your love for animals and your connection to God's creation. So, Danica, as we think about the ways that you would perhaps be willing to continue to plug into church, I pray that you might be willing to be part of the conversations if we talk about using some of the the gift of our outdoor space to create something like a, a butterfly sanctuary where showing God's love includes growing spaces for flying things. Reagan, no matter how old you get, I will cherish my memories of you as the energetic little girl with a love for crafts who just wanted to be a big helper at the Johnsonville Christmas party when we were there. Reagan, you know, you might be soft-spoken, but in so many ways you're one of the most courageous people I know. 
willing to dare a new setting and a new school to live into a greater sense of who you are, knowing what is good and right and seeking to live that. Reagan, you have a gift for being really present with little kids. So I pray that you might consider partnering with your grandma as a shepherd to share your presence and your kindness and friendship with the little ones as they, they come here and they learn what it means to love God and to follow Jesus. So Hayden, I don't know exactly what it was over the last year, but all of a sudden you seem to open up and share your sense of humor and your sarcasm. And you became more and more willing to speak your mind. Hayden, I especially appreciated your different and outside of the box perspectives when we talked about real life examples about what it means to live our faith when the answers aren't obvious or easy. You should know that a number of mentors and uh, people involved with Christmas programs that you've been involved with have commented about the strength of your speaking voice. I pray that you might be willing to share your presence, your insight, and your voice. As we heard in our scripture today, other voices matter. And they help us to hear how God is still speaking. They help us to grow together. And in com by complete contrast, Connor, I knew you for years before I ever heard you speak. I was so very grateful when the Kilgore started coming to church because for whatever reason, when Luke was around, you talked more. While you may not have said a whole lot for a lot of years, Connor, you always showed up. You showed up. You'd offer yourself in service to others. You've showed up. You've worked hard, even as a kid. And that speaks volumes about who you are. Your involvement in Shantytown, uh, the fundraiser for Habitat for Humanity. Your presence when we were doing yard cleanup, helping with Kama Cafe, helping with the spaghetti dinner when you were really little. You weren't even in the youth group at the time. And your presence at every youth broad fry. Connor, you show up. You show up with a good attitude, willing to work, and to build relationship with others. And that makes a difference. Showing up, especially with a good attitude, is a gift that empowers us to show God's love in greater ways and to reach out to more people. So, Jada, I don't know what it is about this middle part of the alphabet here, but... Like them, you had a history of not being very talkative. Jada, your baptism, I've told you, continues to be a very memorable and meaningful experience for me. Your family moved out of state for a while, and I'm really thankful that when you moved back to Wisconsin, you came home to Ebenezer. But Jada, I feel like I've only really gotten a, the chance to know you since late last spring. And honestly... I have to tell you, Jada, I don't want to not know you. When you walked into the sanctuary on Wednesday, you were this bubbly and engaging presence. And when you left, I thought, geez, what a bummer. <laughs> I need to spend more time with Jada. So in a lot of ways, I feel, Jada, like we're just getting to know one another. So I hope that before you graduate from high school, that you'll actually go on a mission trip with us so that, one, you can experience one of these amazing faith-forming experiences, but in the process, get a chance to make connections with a number of different people, including me, so that we can be in supportive and nurturing encourage and, and encouraging relationship with each other. Jada, I have a sense that you could help us as a church 
to better understand how to extend an extravagant welcome to whoever walks through the door. So Devin Schersel, talk about a voice that gets your attention. When I typed your name, I actually typed in all caps right on the other side of your name, Mr. Christmas Program. Your vibrant personality and your presence have blessed us for so many years in the telling of the Christmas story in word and in song. Devin, your courage and your confidence, even when you were really young, has been impressive. Not to mention your demand of excellence of yourself. Devin, you excel in a number of different things, and you do so while maintaining a sense of humor. So I pray that as you consider how you would like to be involved in the church, that Devin, you'd consider sharing your gifts in worship so that your presence and your voice can continue to encourage and inspire us as a community of faith. Sam, in the words of Charlie T.D., following the first meeting that the mentors had with the confirmation students to plan the Lenten services, he walked up to me and he said, Sam Sawacki, that kid is impressive. You make an impression, Sam. Not just because you're like one of the tallest people many of us know, but Sam, your intellect, your insight, your willingness to think through the hard questions, your desire to help and to serve others. It's impressive. And Sam, I know that unlike Devin, you don't want to have anything to do with standing up here and talking if you're not forced to do it. Yet, I hope that you're willing to share your gifts by being present as we seek to reach out and be helpful and encouraging presence in the community in ways that matter and change lives. And I'd like to come and see you play football. You know, you play football for Kohler, whose program I heard really got turned around by the fo coach that's now in Falls. But I really need that football schedule from you soon because as much as your pastor wants to be a, an encouraging, supportive presence, I'm also a weather wimp. So I look forward to seeing you on the football field sometime very soon. And Quinn, Quinn Wingender, when I think of you, I think of your giggle, mostly because it just makes me happy. Interestingly, Quinn, on the flip side of that, I have to tell you that you are the only confirmation student ever who has emailed me and requested that I add you to the email list so that you can receive the information directly which says a lot about your sense of organization and responsibility. Quinn, you've shared your musical gifts with us here at church on a number of occasions, and you've demonstrated over and over again that you too are just phenomenal with little kids. Now, I know that your happy place, Quinn, the place where you experience the most vivid God sightings is at your family's lake house on the weekends. Still, since I have your email, as we keep learning how to live into being the church in these ever-changing times, I pray that you might be willing to be part of a team that listens for the voice of God still speaking, calling to us to be the church in new and meaningful and dynamic ways. So today, you are confirming your faith and you are affirming for yourself those vows that other people made for you at your baptism. I pray that as you do, we all might reaffirm our commitment to learn and to grow in faith together, offering our presence, our gifts, our voices. May we confirm our faith in the God who provides not always in the ways we would expect or prefer, but who always shows up, blessing us in ways that empower us to go out and be a blessing for each other. Peace be with you. Amen.
Friends, I encourage you to please join with me as we are called to this time of gratitude and generosity. God asks us to give of ourselves in ways that are meaningful and valuable. We offer our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings for the work of God's kingdom come in our time and place, revealing God's goodness to all who will look and see. Friends, at Ebenezer United Church of Christ, we share our gifts in a number of different ways. Some of us give electronically, some use the website and the app related to that that you can download onto your cell phone. Others prefer to use the drop box at church or leave your envelopes as you leave the worship space. However we give, we pray God's blessing of our generosity. And we dedicate these gifts to God as we pray. You provide for us, O oh God, though not always in the ways we expect. We offer ourselves and our gifts to you in gratitude and trust. May they be for us a reminder of your generosity May they be for others a blessing that opens the way of abundant life. May our generosity nurture our relationships with you and our neighbors as we learn to love as you love. Amen. And now I would invite you to please rise if you are able as we join together in singing, I was there to hear your morning cry. focus on our life together. If you have an announcement or acknowledgement that you'd like to share, I would invite you to please come forward to do that now. Friends, we are selling chicken dinner tickets for only two more weeks. Our chicken dinner is on Sunday, October 3rd as a drive through only or pick up. Um, and there's we need lots of help for that. Uh, so if you'd like to purchase tickets for that, you can do so today. Next week is the absolute last week. But we do need lots of help. So there's lots of different ways to help. And on the um, closet door near the comma counter, you'll see sign-up sheets for a number of different things. So 
Your consideration to help out with the chicken dinner is certainly appreciated. Barb? Good morning. Um, next Sunday, uh, the WISE team is hosting a mental health fair. Uh, we're partnering with the Mental Health Network of Sheboygan County to do that. Um, it's going to be from 11 until 1 o'clock right here on our yard outside. We will have walking tacos available for donation. And there will be speakers as well as yoga, and Judy Stock will be also there as well. So come join us for a little bit of it if you can, or if you can join us for the whole time, we'd really love to see you. Thank you. And did we clarify that that event was um, only if the weather was nice? If the weather's nice, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because it's an outdoor event, if it's rainy next Sunday, um, the, we will not host the outdoor mental health fair. The speakers will be available on YouTube. Perfect. Thank you so, so, so much. Friends, I would ask that you please keep in your thoughts and your prayers. Uh, Paul Pfeiffer. Paul Pfeiffer um, has really been struggling for wellness. Um, issues with some wound care. And Paul is having surgery on Friday in Green Bay. So your prayers for, for comfort and healing are certainly appreciated. Also, we ask for your prayers for Paul Meritic, uh, or Meritic. I always do that wrong. Paul Morotic, Craig Morotic's dad, um, who is in the hospital. Um, we're hoping that he can go home soon, but they're still not exactly certain why Paul is so weak. So prayers for two Pauls, Paul Pfeiffer and Paul Morotic. And uh, just real quickly, we are having uh, going on an adult mission trip. We're planning to do so in January to Back Bay Mission in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. So plans are in place for that. If you think you might be interested and you'd like some more information, I would love, I'd love to talk to you about going to Biloxi, Mississippi in January. It was an incredible, incredible experience and uh, one that we would like to share with others if they'd like to be involved. If you have any, like, carpentry or painting skills, so anybody, you can go, you don't have to have any skill at all. I went. Right? You don't have to have any skill at all. Um, and, but, I mean, you can just, you can work in food pantries. You can do, there's so many different things to do down there. And all of it matters. All of it matters. They are especially in need of, of people who can do, like, just minor carpentry and, and, or are very trainable. Flooring, that kind of stuff. And especially after the flooding and hurricane season that they're continuing to experience, all help would be appreciated. And friends... Uh, please note that next Saturday at St. John's United Church of Christ, a celebration of the life of Don Eirich will be held. Don went home to God shortly after Easter, and um, this is an opportunity to celebrate and to remember Don's life and love. Visitation, a time of visitation will begin at 1030, and will go until the time of the service at noon. If there are no other announcements or acknowledgments at this time, then I pray, my friends, that God may bless you and keep you, that God's face may shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray that God may look upon you with kindness and shower you with blessing and with peace today and always. Amen. Go make a difference, we can make a difference, go make a difference in the world, go make a difference, we can make a difference, go make a difference in the world, go make a difference, we can make a difference, go make a difference in the world, go make a difference, we can make a difference, go make a difference in the world. We 
Make a difference. We can make.